my boy. Welcome back to the CDI Spotlight. This series aims to shine a spotlight on several CDI titles that I have in my collection to show that the Philips CDI isn't as bad as it's made out to be. Last month I took a look at the CDI's take on a beloved classic, Tetris. It's a great game for the CDI, although it is a bit dated by today's standards. Now I originally wanted to discuss CDI demo discs in today's episode, uh, so I could show off a few interesting things related to them. Unfortunately, both of the demos that I own require the digital video cartridge, so unfortunately I can't play them right now. Kind of really wish I had known that ahead of time when I purchased the CDI. In any case, I had to shift some things around, so today's game is going to be Moses the Exodus. Yippee! Hmm, gonna have to get this house checked out. Okay, a little disclaimer before we start. Uh, I'll be the first to tell you that I, I'm not the religious type at all. However, I do find religious games to be interesting, mostly just because they're very peculiar at times. Whether it's the knockoff baby blue cartridges from the Nintendo or the equally bizarre Super Noah's Ark 3D, yeah, you know, I'm intrigued by the fact that these games even exist. Unfortunately for us today, this game is more of an edutainment game instead of a platform or an FPS. So does this game part the sea of mediocrity or is it plagued with issues? Let's find out. So Moses the Exodus is broken up into five sections, with three of them not really containing interactive content. The major focal point of Moses the Exodus is the Exodus short film. It goes into a little detail about the story of Moses, from being cast into the river all the way to freeing the slaves. It isn't anything glamorous, in fact I would rather watch the Ten Commandments film starring Charlton Heston. The animation during the Exodus film is pretty spotty as well, when there is animation. Half the time it's just a voiceover over a still image. It's just kind of weird when certain parts have animations and others don't. While the animation is lacking, the artwork is actually pretty good. I mean, it's consistent with the other CDI games that I've played, especially the ones that fall into the kids game category. I will say the artists went out of their way to add interesting details to some of the images in the uh, story. Like these plague images, for example. Yikes. Okay, so the Exodus segment is only about 14 minutes. That's probably long enough for a kid's attention span, but I feel like they really could have added a little more. Especially because it just ends right after Moses escapes the Pharaoh. I guess you had to play the sequel to get the rest of the story, and yes, there is a sequel. But is that it? Just a short film about the story of Moses? Nope! There's also a point-and-click maze game called Pyramid Pursuit. I might have missed something when I started Pyramid Pursuit, but I wasn't aware of what the point of the game was until I finished it. Apparently, you're a slave that gets trapped in the pyramid around the time that Moses leaves with the slaves. You have to navigate your way through the complicated maze without going the wrong way. Be careful, or you could end up croaking. It looks like you are lunch for this huge frog. Pyramid Pursuit starts you off in different sections of the pyramid every time you lose and come back. I'm still not entirely sure that there is a logical path that you can follow in order to escape the maze. Sometimes certain rooms appear in the same sections, and sometimes they don't. It's also really easy to lose by clicking on the wrong door direction. You have reached the Chamber of Doom, sealed forever in the deep, 
dark depths of pyramid pursuit. Try again if you dare. <laughs> There's also a narrator that tries to guide you by keeping you on the godly path, but he doesn't always say which path that is exactly. Which do you think is the lesser of two evils? <laughs> Even when he drops subtle hints, they're not always right. Couple that with the odd religious metaphors and it is a recipe for disaster. Remember that God will keep you from falling when you choose His way. You also can't go back from the way you came, which leads to more confusion. The narrator's dialogue is useful, but isn't always helpful. I feel like a better game would give better hints or more direct nods on where to go, especially if you don't always start at the same spot when you begin the game. I mean, at the very least, they could have at least had a map of the places you already visited. I'm an idol worshipped by many. There's someone downstairs who worships me. Would you like to meet him? There are also some distractions throughout the maze. Some benefit you and some don't. It's easy to decipher most of the requests, but others are flat out confusing. I may only be a slave, but let me try to help you. In addition, the random people you encounter don't animate in any way. It's just more voiceovers over still images. These scenes would have greatly benefited from some type of animation given what's shown on screen. An intruder! Sick him, Fido! You can trust in other gods, so go the way I'm pointing. There's more, oh, much, 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 where this comes from if you go right, 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 right. You've been overtaken by Pharaoh's guards. You're in trouble now. They knock you out and leave you in another part of the pyramid. So the main game is actually pretty hard when it gets down to it. I'd say one strategy to escape the maze is to get out a pen and paper, but given that the start point changes, it's really hard to map out. That being said, let's check out some of the other things you can do in the game. Once the player beats or gets bored with Pyramid Pursuit, they can select one of many other activities located on the home menu. For those that want to bone up on their Bible verses, the Bible icon is where you'll want to go. If you're looking for more animations and voiceovers, the Tell Me More section will definitely fulfill that need. There are nine different animations to view in this section, each featuring different subjects. The subjects range from Moses to miracles to even God himself. Now, if you're looking for more games to play, then you're in luck. The Playroom has a variety of mini-games for the player to try out. For instance, Connect the Dots provides a mindless activity to keep the player busy for a few seconds. Yep. The player starts out on a specified dot. The next dot that you need to connect to is highlighted for you. If the player connects the dots, we hear a voice cheer. If you don't, the voice says... Nope, nope, nope. Or... Whoops. Once you complete the picture, you're taken to a drawing minigame section. You can select this option from the Playroom menu itself, but I guess the developers figured you wouldn't want to stare at a completed Connect the Dots drawing after you completed it. There's also a selection of slide puzzles with varying difficulties and a karaoke section. If there's one thing that I hate, it's slide puzzles, so I won't be playing those. If you're subscribed to my YouTube channel, you may have seen the Moses songs that I uploaded back in December. All those songs are from this game. But what review wouldn't be complete without listening to Moses and Me? Go to school, play it cool. All my friends are breaking rules. Take a test, do my best, they whisper in my ear. A or D on number three, they ask me for the answer, please. Tell them what they want to know or end up all alone.
it break, feeling great, took the test and passed. Here they come, should I run, should I have given in? Just in time, a friend of mine stands beside me in the line. There they go, now I know I do it all again. Moses and me, back up to the rest. Well, that's about all this game has to offer. If you're interested, there's an About This Game section that details why the developers made this game. Basically, they created this game to help kids receive wholesome children's content. So I guess they succeeded? Overall, this game is just okay to me. I appreciate what the developers were trying to do by creating an interactive way to learn about the Bible and the story of Moses you know, for kids. But there are certain aspects about the game that fell a little flat, for me at least. I will say the artwork looks nice, but the animation leaves a lot to be desired, when there is animation. I will say though that the narrator is actually really good. Moses the Exodus does attempt to teach lessons about being a better person, and that's always a good thing. I'm kind of torn with how to rate this game or you know, experience. As a game, it's more of a collection of games, and the collection is bare bones at best. As an interactive experience to learn more about God and Moses, it does okay. I don't know what kid would be interested in having their video game talk to them for long periods of time, but you know, it kind of works. In my opinion, a better game would have incorporated those lessons throughout the Pyramid Pursuit game, you know, the main game within this game. Or it could have strove to have another game that, you know, taught those lessons throughout as well. Overall, like I said, it's a decent experience. The clear standout features of this game are the artwork, the short films, the narration, and the karaoke song Moses and Me. With that being said, I'm giving Moses the Exodus three idols worshipped by many out of five. So next month I actually plan on tackling two CDI games. I'm going to revisit Dark Castle and see if my original review of it was fair, and I'm going to look at Cartoon Jukebox, just for fun. 